Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to another mixed bag. This is the program where we go through various different things, everything from pro play rackets to new racket updates to other things happening in the tennis nerd universe. And if you have any comments or questions or ideas for content you'd like to see in upcoming mixed bags, let me know, send the comments in the comments below. My consultation service is back up for you who need advice. Uh, I have uh, three different models, light, regular and pro. So check them out on tennisnerd.net, also updated all the time with new content. So uh, that's the hub for everything tennis nerd. That out of the way, I have loads of rackets to review right now. I have the new extremes. I'm gonna test all models uh, like this one, the MP, and it's gonna come in a few weeks to review in, in my estimation, maybe a bit sooner. I also have a spin racket from a French brand that I'm gonna reveal as a review very soon. I've been testing that for a few, for a few weeks. And the Technifiber T-Fight ISO, you might have seen that the 305, I just published my review of that one. It looks like this, so you maybe saw that one. So loads and loads of rackets to review. When it comes to pro player rackets, recently saw Denis Shapovalov testing a new frame, thanks to Daniel Pizorno on Instagram. He shared a Washington training video where um, Shapovalov was using a blacked out frame. I mean, he's been a bit all over the place this season. Uh, started with the Vcore 95, the, his old one, then he went to the ESO 98, played with that for a bit. Wasn't really trusting himself, it seems like, because on the grass uh, end of the grass court season, he switched to the Vcore 95, and the new one, not quite happy with that one either. It must be because now he's with a blacked out racket. So question is what is under the, the blacked out paint? Maybe it's the new Vcore 98. That was what I was uh, thinking when I published my piece on Tennis Nerd on Net. Could it be the new Vcore 98? Could it be some special model? Could it be testing uh, Vcore 97 Pro? I don't know. Um, maybe some more close-ups on the racket will help, but obviously only Yonex can know if they're about to release the new Vcore line. It's soon time for the new Vcore, I would assume, but still, this is early days. So he is testing a blacked out frame. What is it? If you have any information, let me know in the comments. In my previous mixed bag, I talked about Dominic Team's new string setup. We had a bit of question, what is it? He's definitely playing with a different setup than the normal RPM power. And it's true, I actually got it confirmed that he switched back to what he used at Indian Wells when he won that title in 2019. It's a mix of head Lynx Tour, and that's 138 Lynx Tour that he puts in the mains at 25.5 kilos. And this is from Gestad. So Headlings Tour 130 and 56 pounds approx in the main strings, so in the string going here. And then he has a Headhawk White 125 in the crosses at 24.5 kilos, which is 54 pounds. So um, interesting setup. I mean, Nikki Run, who's you, who you've seen in my videos, a friend of mine, uses a similar setup with Lynx Tour and Headhawk. And it, the hawk feels like it plays a little bit more comfortable since it's a thinner gauge as well. We'll get extra control and some bite on the ball with the Lynx Tour. It's a nice combination unless you have arm issues because it's a semi-stiff setup uh, with two polys in a hybrid. But uh, if you want more comfort, you can always put like a natural gut like in this Radical Prototype 2021. I got a lot of questions when I published this on Instagram. Oh, is it the new Radical? I've seen the new Radical in my visit to Kennelbach. I can't tell you about that one until uh, later on, uh, but this is not it. This is the prototype edition of the current Radical MP. There was an MP and a Pro. I love this paint job more than the retail version, uh, but my buddy Bas, who's Dutch, he likes the orange. So really enjoy this one. And you can't be natural gut, just ask some pros. It's, it's very nice in a hybrid setup, but quite costly. Uh, another racket I've been reviewing is the Pro Kenix Ki. 10, uh, kind of a pure drive style racket with the maraca style um, technology of the kinetic where you have uh, material inside, it's actually micro beads moving around to the impact zone where you hit the ball, saving your arm some shock and it actually works really well this technology. I've used it uh, in many different Prokenics rackets and I have no arm issues at all with Prokenics. So uh, the technology works, uh, this one is probably my favorite Prokenics racket, but if you want to read more detailed impressions, check out my patreon.com slash tennis nerd where you support tennis nerd and you get extra content. So that's one way to make sure I keep going doing this if you like the stuff I do. But this one is a very interesting frame review to come on my YouTube channel. So review season is on. 
Uh, there's also a season of tennis. Uh, we're, we're nearing US Open. It's building up. There were some pro player string tensions uh, published during the Atlanta Open. And uh, it was widely shared. I don't know who took the picture, but it's kind of everywhere. It was a nice whiteboard of, of specs. Things to note from this picture, uh, John Isner is um, not using a Prince Warrior, he's using a Beast Longbody, so the racket uh, denomination there is, it might be incorrect, don't look at that. Uh, they got some few things wrong there. Strings though should be correct as, as, as in most cases. 35 pounds tension for uh, Isner, I also saw some pictures of 38, so he's testing a few different tensions. He did lose in the end to, to Jensen Brooksby, who is very strong on hard courts, but had a pretty miserable clay and grass court season and I've talked to coach Evan about Brooksby a few times and his crafty game. He doesn't seem like the most likable guy on tour judging by all the lukewarm handshakes he gets. I saw a few and uh, but I don't know. I don't know the guy so maybe he's, he's a super nice guy but it seems like he pisses people off on the tennis court at least maybe because he's so good at I don't know. Uh, so you can have some interesting uh, tensions and stuff. Rilo Pelka he's actually testing a Wilson Pro Staff 100, as far as I know, all the power 47 pounds, pretty low tension there for an all pro, I would say. Nothing new, Nick Curious. a lot of this stuff is, is, is nothing new. I'm not surprised to see Francis Tiafo and his creative hand skills using a lower tension Polytour Pro. That doesn't really surprise me, but some of this stuff is interesting. Lowest tension, Jack Sock, 35 pounds. Many of you know about that already. He uses quite a stiff frame loads and loads of rotations on his shots so he can play with this low tension and uh, there are a few uh, a few tensions here that are in kilos so you have a k after the number for example Ilya Vashka he uses um, uh, 26 25 kilos in tensions which is 57 55 pounds approx in John Millman the the highest tension with the 66 pounds which is extremely high I mean it's up there and almost towards Dustin Brown territory with black coat which is a pretty stiff poly so so some guys still like this really stiff tensions one racket is completely off alexey poprin i had his racket he uses 4g which is correct but it doesn't use the fx 500 dunlop power frame he uses a pt57a 1619 pattern from head so that was a little bit off here to say the least but you know it's the important part is the the string Marcelo Melo, doubles player, RPM and gut at 18.5 kilos on the gut. That's an interesting setup, very low tension on gut. And also Marcus Giron using very high tensions for his uh, VCore 95 uh, with gut at 61 pounds and blue steel polyester at 63 pounds. So there were some pointers here that, that stood out, but otherwise, I mean, I've seen a lot of these, so maybe nothing shocking for, for me in this case. Maybe some of you thought something was extra interesting, so let me know in the comments below. Committing to a racket is a topic we talked about before. My buddy Magnus, who I hit with in Sweden, he's been a tennis nerd, extraordinary, trade a lot of rackets. I couldn't find his stick. I get a lot of emails about this. This is why I put up the consultation service. Again, I know a lot of you struggle with finding that stick that feels perfect. There are no perfect rackets. I talked about that in other videos. You need to find something that either accentuates your strengths or diminishes your weaknesses. That's a little bit up to you. If you're super frustrated that your backhand is misfiring or you're not hitting it clean, but one racket helps it feel like a more solid shot, I would probably go for that. Or if you're a big server, uh, like if Riley Opelka would change his racket, he would never change to a racket that gives him less of a serve uh, because that's gonna be costly to him on that level where he plays and his serve is so important. So. It depends on who you are as a player and what your strengths and weaknesses are and how big they are in, in relation to each other. Uh, whether you would go for, for a racket that diminishes your weaknesses or improves your strengths. Last year Magnus has been playing with the new Vico 100 and he's been playing his best tennis and now I hit with him again. Now I was in, in Sweden for a couple of weeks and uh, I can really see improvement, consistency, playing with Polytor Pro, same set, string setup, 53 pounds, 24 kilos, just keeps playing with this, this uh, racket, he has four of them now, and it just took a lot of the, the insecurities and doubts and stuff out of the equation, and he plays much better tennis. So I can really recommend finding your racket and sticking to it. I, I did this experiment with the Encode 95, my first series racket from 20 years ago or more, and uh, I, I just stuck to that for a period, and I was feeling I was playing much better. Now I'm, I might be free to, to test something more with more power again, because I feel like it's a little bit demanding at times when you're playing on clay especially, which I do a lot in Spain. 
But overall, I, I saw my tennis improve with my consistency, my confidence, and my doubts about what racket I should use. Uh, and made tennis more fun for the time being. So if you're in this racket conundrum, try to find one using the consultation service or other materials, content I create on Tennis Nerd or Patreon. Try to get one racket where you feel okay with, that you're comfortable, comfortable with, and stick to that. I think you will see an improvement like Magnus saw in his game. And I've seen also during my experiment with the end code. So to summarize, new rackets coming up very soon, new reviews, a lot of things happening before the US Open. We're looking forward to the US Open, seeing some interesting results. Alcaraz is on the tier again. Lorenzo Musetti, a great result, beating Alcaraz actually and, uh, and winning Hamburg. So um, you see some interesting results happening. We'll see now that we move on to the hard courts. It seems like Brooksby is on a good level again. Maybe we'll see Medvedev come back and play well. Will Djokovic be able to play the, the US Open? I don't know. Uh, it's a weird situation and it's not good for tennis. And uh, what, what's happening with Wimbledon, what's happening with, um, with Djokovic vaccination statuses and everything. It would be just good if we could go back to everybody plays and uh, wins wins. Uh, that would be nice because it's a sport after all. That's all for this mixed bag. Let me know if you have any ideas, comments, questions for the next one. A big thanks to my sponsor, Facelo Balls, the singles playbook. I use that a lot to improve my strategy and place. Link in the description, how to beat pusher, how to beat counter punchers, how to beat uh, very aggressive players. Videos included. You can log in online and find those accompanying each example here. Very nice book. Thanks for sponsoring. And I bought it myself a year ago. So it's something I really, really believe in. If you want to support the work I do, please uh, buy anything through the links in the description. You also find some nice discounts on my Tennis Nerd deals page. Uh, that's it. Have a nice day. And don't forget to play some tennis.